Hey, guess what? It's Monday night. We got a full house here at VoiceOver hey, Body Shop. guess what? It's Monday night. <laughs> you just said that. I know I just said that. Right. <laughs> but anyway, George is not here tonight. He's not. He's not. So Jack Daniel is our co-host tonight. Wow, that's fantastic. Oh, no, please, don't no. fake applause. Please, please, don't please. stop. Uh, anyway, so tonight we've got two guests. Actually. Two? That's tw two for the price of one, you're saying to me? Yes. That's a bargain. And if you don't get your money's worth, you get it back. Uh, anyway, uh, we have Catherine Horan with us tonight. Wow. Who is uh, a casting director over at The Voice Casters, just oh. up there on Burbank. That is so amazing. I mean, I know that we voice actors long to talk to casting directors. So yes. That's pretty cool. That's right. And we have David H. Lawrence as a special... Special, extra special guest tonight. Surprise guest. We didn't know. He just walked in the door and said, hey, can I talk? Sure, fine, no problem. Awesome. Anyway, uh, and we got a little news. We got some tech. And we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. And we'll take your questions. Coming up right now on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers. With a passion for voice over recording technology. And the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together... In one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com. Everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm Jack Daniel. Am I? You are. All right. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, my goodness. No echo, though. It's not like we're in Radio we City can add Music that in Hall. Post. But It'll be a post thing. Exactly. Well, an exciting show tonight because we yeah. got, this, there's a lot of people in here tonight. There are quite a few. It's like being in the Coliseum. Except yeah. more so. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but... Uh, if, if you want to put on the, the audience cam there for a second, Susan, so we can get a, a slight idea of how... There's my mom! Yeah! There's my mom right there! <laughs> Appearing on the show for the fourth time. Wow. Believe time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we've got some great guests tonight. We we've do. got uh, David H. Lawrence going to talk to us a little bit. And then mm. Catherine Horan is going to talk to us about the casting process. I'm excited about this. Yeah, because you get a lot of casting. I get a lot of casting, but I always want more casting. That's the idea. Yeah. Well, it's good to show up and have the, you know, the casting director say, "I want you." Yeah. We're going to find out how it is you get the casting director to say that more often to you. Fantastic. Or me. Or you. Right. So if you have questions about for Catherine later, make sure you start putting them in the chat room and I will get them to me, who will then get them to Dan. <laughs> or you can get to tell them yourself. I'm already confused. All right. Well, considering George isn't here, we're doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> you know, you're hearing us, which is the most important thing. Anyway, it's uh, it's Monday night, and it's now time for Voice Over Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. Here's the voiceover extra news for August 27th, 2018. Audiobook pronunciations. You know, you might publish a periodic newsletter, like Natasha here, or blog for your voiceover clients and prospects, 
And if you're an audiobook narrator, another important audience for your thoughts is your listener fan club. That's the case for longtime voice actor and narrator extraordinaire Ann Richardson, whose recent post to our fans caught our attention, because it not only informs listeners about a crucial aspect of how narrators work, but also because narrators can use lots of this info themselves. And the topic is age-old. How to pronounce those tricky, lengthy, unfamiliar, and odd-sounding names of people and places. That article will appear tomorrow on voiceoverextra.com. And tonight, here's a peek at the advice that narrators can pick up. First, she says, know your limitations. I'm not good at that, Dan. Uh, for instance, uh, the way you've always pronounced a particular word is not necessarily what the publisher or listening audiences will want to hear. And gives a few examples, including how to pronounce the event that shows off the skills of cowboys and cowgirls. Okay, well, some might say it's a rodeo, while others insist it's rodeo. You can think of lots more, I'm sure. So, what to do? One major help, Anne says, is to hire a book prepper. A professional book prepper charges about $25 an hour. They do. They actually do. And delivers so much valuable info to save a narrator time. For instance, the prepper will note unusual words and proper nouns, look up the pronunciation, and create a spreadsheet for the narrator to use for reference. In addition, the prepper may give notes summarizing the arc of the story, chapter by chapter. All of this helps a narrator visualize the performance. Of course, you can also find lots of help online and list sites including Forvo, How Would You Say, YouTube, and many more as great resources for pronunciation. Another is a site called Audio Eloquence for language, dialect, and accent research. And a brand new service called Pronunciology.com has been launched by narrator Adam Werner that searches multiple online sources for the word you want to pronounce or want to learn more about. This service is by subscription. And finally, you can ask your Facebook friends for help. Sometimes the answers get a bit facetious or comical, considering this could be at any hour of the day or night. But friends truly want to help. In her original blog to listeners, Anne concludes with this plea to listeners. Please be kind. It's hard work pronouncing all that stuff. You'll find much more helpful info in the article tomorrow at voiceoverextra.com your daily resource for voiceover success. So, do you write a blog? I do not. Neither do I. Yeah. You know, I mean, I write I articles have and stuff. I nothing to say. Yeah. Nothing to say? <laughs> you talk for a living. <laughs> I've said it all, and I get it all out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more. I mean, you're always over here on the couch doing all our social media. Tell us a little bit about Jack Daniel. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm a full-time voice artist. I, um, I mostly do... Uh, Promo and trailer work. I do a lot of commercial work as well. Um, things have been going pretty well for me. I really enjoy the tech side, which is why I tune in here as I look at Natasha for no particular reason uh, all the time. <laughs> but um, I have been actually having some really good luck lately. You might hear a couple of my trailers out right now. Uh, we've got one on uh, for God Bless the Broken Road and one coming out for Hellfest. Wow. So check that out. Yeah, great. I mean, you just rambled into town here. and I just, I paid off the right people. I sucked up to the right folks. You know, it all worked out. That's, and that's the most important thing. Well, George isn't here tonight. He took a personal night. Oh, that's so, sad for me. Yes, I know. It's good for you. I miss Look George. Look at the exposure you get here. It's good for me. I, yeah. I don't miss George at all. No, I do. I mean, you know, and we're going to be <laughs> off for a couple of weeks, so I'll really miss him. I know. But anyway, He's a good man. Yes. Anyway, so you brought in a little toy tonight. Did. So we can have a little bit of tech update. What have we here? This this is the Sennheiser MKH-8040. Now, if you Ooh. guys watch the show, you know that Anthony Mendez is a big proponent, thank you, of this microphone. In fact, he switched from using the 416, the industry workhorse, to this microphone, which is in the box. And this is not the mic microphone. Oh, okay. So let me pull the microphone out, which you'll be surprised to see is this little guy right there. I don't know if you can even see it. It's so tiny. Wow. But he uses this one because, Dan, he says that he can not only use it for promo, which he does so much for, yes, and Jane does. the Virgin, which, of course, he does right. all the time. Yes, he does. But for uh, narration and commercial work as well. He says it does all the work that uh, usually two or three microphones have to do. Wow. It's just a little tiny... Not, it's not, certainly not a shotgun. It's more like a pistol. It, it's, I think it's considered it's a, a mini shotgun it, it, is actually its designation because it does have the little LCD inside of it. Uh-huh. You know, but um, the Ooh. pickup pattern's much different. 
I'm still trying to figure it out, uh, and I know that you're going to try it too. Yeah. This is all thanks to our friends at Sennheiser who loaned me a couple of mics, um, apparently thinking I was somebody else. Um, and Christopher Courier is the guy Chris, who, who lent this. He is the vice president there, actually. He's not just a guy at Sennheiser. He's, he's like the vice the guy at yeah. Sennheiser. And he's our friend. And he's a yeah. good man. Yeah. It also comes with the little... The cutest little, little button of a <laughs> mic screen. That's, ooh, <laughs> looks like something from a Mario game. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. But, this, this case is clearly uh, compensating for something. Yes. So, yes. so I, I get to borrow this for a week or so, do. and I'll get yeah. to do a review of it. And yes, please do. Very cool. I'm going to be doing a review myself, so let's have competing or, or, or perhaps complimentary reviews. That would be fun. Okay. We have to do it from the same booth, though. Oh, there has to be right. an honest comparison. Well, you're welcome to come to me, or I can come to you. All right. We'll talk about it. All right. You only live around the corner, so I that do. helps a whole I do. lot. I do. You know, in a city of 10 million people, and he moves in around the corner. <laughs> he just can't get away from me, I know, I know. Anyway. No, so, no anyway, we've got great guests tonight. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. We're going to get our shirt caught in the box. Yeah, we'll leave it. And all sorts of other stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, Go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back. Oh, and what happened to Jack? No, now it's David H. Lawrence the 17th. How are you, sir? Not bad. Actually, Good. I have to lower my seat so we're <laughs> on par here. That's right. Everyone will think you're taller than I am, yes, and Lord it, knows it, you're it, not it, taller no, than I'm anybody. Not, I'm not. So, what brings you here tonight? So we're talking to, we're, I know we're talking about limiting beliefs. So oh, is this already gonna... we are? We are. I wanted to talk about the microphone, how to pronounce the word often properly. I mean, I got so much all planned, it's but often. we're right in... No, it's not. I know it's not. Ever. And it's yeah. hard sometimes because it feels like that's such a wonderful, formal pronunciation of it. And you hear it's, it on it's the... It's a mid-Atlantic pronunciation. Exactly. There we go. But yeah, limiting beliefs. Um, it's interesting. Something that I uh, started to feel in the coaching that I have with my clients was not what microphone should I get? What software should I use? You know, the, the real core to being successful at anything, whether you're an actor on camera, you're an actor uh, on mic, um, is not those fact-based things like which microphone, because you know, you, you could be swayed in a million different what directions. Microphone you That's use. right. If it's a decent microphone, there's a good chance that it's going to be just fine. But when you, why does my chair keep rotating to the left? Yeah, just what seems to be the there's, there's a <laughs> magnet over there. It's rotating. I'm like, you like by the time we're done with the interview, <laughs> my gonna, back is going to be to you, and I'm going to be talking to the people in <laughs> Sherman Oaks. Um, so uh, what I found was most useful was changing the beliefs that you have if they're not serving you. And sometimes that's really hard to do. Sometimes it's hard to recognize that a belief that you think is very much true, you know, uh, casting directors, if they don't cast me, they hate me, or I didn't do well enough, or a million other things that reflect your belief about the situation. Right. Right. And, you know, Catherine's going to show very shortly how many times that's absolutely true. You sucked so bad. <laughs> But most of the time, that isn't even part of the equation, right? But when you believe that, you look at a situation and you say, well, this has to be the truth. This has to be the reason that this is going on. And you make this, ever since cavemen tried to figure out the sun, you know, it comes up in the morning, goes down at night. And they think, okay, I'm not a flat earther, so the earth is round. The sun must be going around the earth, right? It took us a while to figure out that that's not the case. Right. But for a while, that felt true, right? 
And the same thing with our, uh, our careers, our lives. We have these beliefs that are formed when we're children. They're handed to us by our parents and our peers. Maybe early in life when we start off at work, uh, we get these, these things handed to us that just simply must be true. And in our business, oh my God, are there myths about how it works? It's tough. I mean, I've gone out on a lot of on-camera auditions and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you really don't know what's going to happen. And you don't, you know, it's like, can I do this? Can I, you know, and if you don't, and you walk, you're driving back down the street going... Yeah. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Yeah, don't do, don't do your best work to the rearview mirror on the way home. No, I've don't done do that. Plenty of that. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, one of the, one of the things that I didn't know, unfortunately, when I moved out here about fifteen years ago, was that there are no parts for anyone over the age of forty. I didn't know that, and when I started getting booked on roles on television, I had a lot of hell to pay from people who knew this rule and were living their life by it. You know, mm. it, it's. It's really powerful to watch someone work through the process of discovering how this limiting belief happened, why they think it's true, and what to replace it with, which is a useful, enabling belief that really serves you, that really helps you in a, in a way that, that supports the success of your career. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, just like I woke up one morning, I, I got to do this. I'm going to be going on, on the internet uh, live with video for 21 days straight at 10 o'clock. Like, like doing this show 21 straight days? Well, you know, I, I don't have this much stuff to, I have like my camera and that's okay. basically it. Um, but I'm going to be sharing information with you every single day uh, on one limiting belief that most of us have. And if you don't have the limiting belief, you have some form of it, no doubt. Uh, people think everything from I'm too old for this to I, I'm not good enough for this. Uh, they suffer from the imposter syndrome. Once they figure out that I'm not really the right guy for this job, I'm in trouble because the hook is coming. Um, all of these beliefs that can hold us back. And I went through uh, sort of an epiphany about 20 years ago about all the things that I was telling myself that I thought were true, and they weren't. And I want to share that with people. So we're calling it Believe 2018 a 21 day journey and every morning at 10 o'clock Pacific time, I'm going to be online. You can join me and we'll work through the process of one limiting belief every day. And you'll get that muscle memory of how to replace a limiting belief with an enabling belief. And we'll have some fun online. It'll only be 30 minutes or so. And I know you're sitting there going, how in the world do you expect me? I have a life to be online every day with you live. Well, that's okay. We've got recordings. We've got streams, we've got downloads, we're going to make sure you get all that stuff. I get that you have a life. I am about to really tick off my agents by booking out for 21 days. But that's my that's my commitment to you. And the cool thing is, you think, how much would you pay for all that, right? How much would you pay for this? <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't care what you might pay for it. I want to make this as affordable for everyone as is humanly possible. And so it's 90 bucks. For the whole shoot and match. For 21 days. For 21 days with me live. And then all the recordings. We'll do the chat logs. I'll be It'll be interactive. And so we'll have people responding to what we're talking about. Uh, sharing their issues. Sharing their successes. Their failures. And, and how they fix things. Um, I'm really excited about it. I really am. I'm getting a little choked up. Because there's, there's a thing that happens when you replace a limiting belief that is absolutely beautiful. And when you watch this happen with yourself, with others, I mean, you know people that at one point you thought, man, this, this, this is a problem. They're, they're not going to succeed. And then they realize what works and what wasn't working. And all of a sudden it clicks. It's that little twist of the screw in the factory, right? So I'm really excited about it. It starts this Friday, August 31st. If you want information on it, I've got a URL for you. Why don't we give the URL? You want to do that? Sure. Okay. I mean, if you, if you insist. No. Uh, VO2GoGo.com. So that's VO, the numeral two, gogo.com slash believe. 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 Have you guys been saying that for the last? I mean, this is what we do. Slash. Forward slash. Believe. Believe. And if you go there, you'll get an information on how it's going to happen, what you'll get. We'll have some gifts for you. Uh, right now, there's a free PDF on the process itself. So even if you don't join, you can go and you can uh, see what we're going to do and maybe try it yourself. But I want to hold your hand. I want to walk you through the process. 
I want to stand shoulder to shoulder with you as you look towards your future. And I want to help you achieve the success that you deserve. Right. So, again, let's give them the URL one more time. If you insist. Because I like doing it. <laughs> awesome. It's VO, the numeral two, go, go, VO to go, go, dot com slash. Forward slash. Forward slash. Not a backslash. Ever. It's a forward, forward slash. Forward slash. Uh, believe. So it's very easy. B E L. I E V E. I should have done the misspelling of it and re redirected it. <laughs> that's, right. that's what's holding me back. That's my limiting belief spelling. that everyone can spell. Okay. Thank you so much. And I hope you join me. It'll, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun and it really can change your life. Looking forward to it. Yeah. David, thank you for my joining pleasure. us. Thank what, you so what you're working on these days uh, that you can tell us about? Uh, I'm in the middle of an audio book right now. I'm really excited about it. It's a friend of mine from Canada who's writing a book on the problems with our education system. <laughs> oh, which uh, are, having worked in the education system, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a, it's a mess. Um, and uh, you know, it used to be that I'd go to set and they would have three sheets of paper for me to sign. Right, your search form, your one-page contract, and uh, it's showing you where to go to the bathroom. Uh, and now it's a stack like this of NDAs. And so I'm under non-disclosure on most of the things that I have in the in the work. So yeah, great. Yeah, thank well, you, sir. At least you're busy. And I love this show. I have to tell you. Oh well, thank I you. I love the, I love being a part of the show. I love sponsoring you. I love helping to support you because there is no other resource online like this, and it's awesome. And I really appreciate your time. Well, we appreciate you coming down. Thanks. Driving all the way across. North Hollywood, and just to get here. And just right up the road, Dan. We all live within a few blocks of you. I know, you rode your bike over here. <laughs> anyway, David, thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right. Well, Catherine Haran's going to join us in just a minute. We're going to talk about the voice caster and voice casting and how you get work. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right, well, George isn't here tonight, so I get to tell you about Source Connect. He installs it. I use it. Big difference, wouldn't you say? I use it all the time. So do I. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that you really need as a voice actor. Sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you've got to do a remote session. And, you know, one of my favorite things to do is, a, can you do a phone patch? And normally it's like, I'm all set on my end. How are you? You know, uh, but... You know, it's like phone patch, something from Mad Men from the 60s. Anyway, but today you have the ability to really get high quality audio recorded somewhere else from your studio to them. And they can talk to you and you can talk to them and they can record you. And it works really great. And it's called Source Connect. And they've got lots of different things that you can use on Source Connect. They've got Source Connect Pro, Source Connect Standard, Source Connect Now, which is free using the Opus codec on Google Chrome, you got to at least try it and see how easy it is to communicate with your clients. Because I think one of the most important things, Jack, it is, is that how many times are we, we given the opportunity to do a, do a script and they give you some direction and you record it, you send it out. No, 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 we, we need to change it much better to do a live session. Always insist to your clients, look, if you want me to pronounce things right, if you want me to say it the way you want in real time, let's get on Source Connect and let's make it right the first time. So you're happy with it the first time and you're talking directly to me and you're directing the session and things might work much better. 
And plus, Dan, you have uh, many auditions that specify Source Connect only. So if you don't have it, it's a problem. That's right. So, uh, and, and one more thing I'll say, I'll if you don't mind, it. if I may, is that their support is fantastic. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did something. I did some changes to my system, and I was having some issues. I, I was nervous. I was about a half hour away from a session. I called them. They walked me through it, and I was back up and running. And it was, it was lovely. Yeah. It's great stuff. It really is. Go over to SourceElements.com. Check out their pricing. Check out the programs they have. And buy it or use, use the, at least use Source Connect now and you'll learn it and you'll go, I've got to have the professional level of that because to be a pro, you got to have pro stuff. Anyway, thanks for being our sponsors, Source Elements. We'll be right back with Catherine Haran. So stay tuned. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. <laughs> Snails like it too. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. All right, it's time to introduce our actual guest. You know, David just sort of showed up here. Anyway, Catherine Haran has been a casting director, a demo producer, audio engineer, and voiceover coach with The Voice Caster since 2012. Catherine is cast for major brands like Honda. AMPM, Ashley Furniture, Verizon, Nike, and many more. She has a BA in theater arts and acting from New Mexico State University. That's in Crucis, isn't it? It is. All right, I remembered that. <laughs> and has been an in the entertainment industry for in Los Angeles for over 10 years. Welcome to Voice Over Body Thanks Shop. Thanks so much for having nice me. Nice to have you here. Yes, good yeah. to be here. Yeah, I used to live in Albuquerque, so I remember ah. the guys would go to New Mexico. State. Yeah, they're down in Crucis. See, I tell people I'm from New Mexico, they always assume it's Albuquerque. Oh, okay. You're, are you from Las Cruces originally? I am. Born really? and raised, yeah. Down, out, way out in the desert, where they would bury all the bodies and, you know, Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. So, you came from Las Cruces, mm -hmm. New Mexico. And I did. How, did. how did you get into doing this kind of work? How did you get interested in voiceover? It was purely by accident. It usually uh, is. <laughs> I came here to do acting, like most Everybody people. Everybody else, yeah. Um, I did that for about a year or two and was like, eh, it's not as much fun as I thought it might be. Um, I love the acting part, but the business side of it was kind of draining. Um, I knew Kelly, she's the current owner of The Voice Caster, mm -hmm. um, from some previous work we had both done together. Um, she wasn't the owner yet, Huck was still in charge. Uh -huh. um, but they needed a, a person, and I was looking for a new job, and it just kind of all fell together. So what? How did you just start there and go start casting for them, or what? What was pretty much? I mean, there's you know there's some on the job training and stuff like that, yeah, but because coffee, sweeping up and things like that. <laughs> but because I had an acting background, that really helped to work with the different actors, be able to direct them a little better than you know just someone off the street. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of on the job training, you know, learning to do the engineering stuff. You know, yeah, that was a little new for me. I'd never done that before. Um, but yeah, you know, you you through experience and trial and error you learn about you know everything it takes from the acting side to producing demos right. to what, know, was, what was what was the most what was the, the the most surprising thing you found making that transition from acting to the the, the technical and casting side of it it was something I, I wish I'd known about voiceover before. <laughs> <laughs> like I never considered myself to be a person that would be able to do voiceover. Because I didn't have one of those voices. I didn't have a big booming voice or a voice that I thought was very interesting. But then when you're doing it, you're like, oh, they're just looking for everyday sounding people most of the time. You know, it's a lot of conversational, real type people. And I was like, oh, this is a whole avenue of acting and performing that I had never really known about until yeah. I started there. So tell us a little bit about voice casters itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're driving down Burbank... <laughs> You see people walking around in front yes. like this, looking at <laughs> scripts and trying to... Or a to, nondescript uh, building. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How long has it been there? It's 
been in that location for a little while. Voicecaster itself has been around since 1975. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of the first, I think it was the first casting facility dedicated purely to voiceover. Uh, Bob Lloyd started that back in 1975. He's still around. Um, and we've been at our current location, I feel like, for around 20 years or so. Um, but we do everything. We do casting for union, non-union, um, TV, radio, web, industrial stuff, whatever people need. We can do it. Wow. And and, and have been, obviously, for 20 <laughs> have years. Have been for a very long time. You must be good at what you do. I think so. Um, so you've got classes over there as well. We do. I mean, you're casting people. You mm-hmm. want to get make sure people are good enough to cast. So yeah. tell us about some of the classes there. Exactly. I mean, we've got beginning class, intermediate, advanced, audition pro, and animation classes. Most of our classes are taught by Kelly. She's the owner and head of casting. And that's something that really sets us apart from a lot of the other places, is uh, you get to work with the casting director and owner from the very beginning. You know, it's not just for the upper levels. Um, so it's a good way for us to get to know you so that we can bring students in on projects that we're actively working on. Right, And you've actually got some classrooms there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we do all of our teaching in our booth. It's our upstairs booth that we use for actual sessions as well. Yeah. What different types of classes are there? Um, like We've got the beginning class, which will teach you about the fundamentals of voiceover, everything from mic technique to the different categories of commercial voiceover. Uh, the intermediate class delves a little more into other aspects of voiceover, things like animation, audiobooks, legal disclaimer, and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Then the advanced class really works on getting you ready to get your demo made if you need to do that. Um, and it really works on honing your signature sound. And then our Audition Pro class is really for actors who are working and want to hone their audition skills mm-hmm. so they can get better at auditioning. And then our animation class works on animation copy. Yeah. And I've taken the animation class, and you're in there with like 30 other people, and they give you a script, and you're suddenly doing a cartoon. Exactly. You know, and, and, and do you have any guest uh, speakers there, or guest uh, teachers, or do you have a, a regular staff of people that are We have a regular in? staff of people. Uh, most of them are associated with voice caster, either booth directors, um, or Kelly, who's the owner. Uh, Marsha Goodman teaches our animation class. Uh, she is a freelance uh, animation casting director, and has been doing that for over 30 years, um, and she also likes to bring, when she can, students in to audition for her projects. Ah, good place to so, do that. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Catherine Haran, who is a casting director over at The Voice Casters <laughs> in Burbank, lovely downtown Burbank, California. <laughs> See, nobody remembers lovely downtown Burbank <laughs> unless they watch Johnny Carson. God, I just <laughs> totally date myself with that. Uh, one of the other things that you guys do over there is demos. So yes. I would imagine that getting a demo from a place that does casting is going to do a demo that's probably going to be on, you know, on, on the right path to what you're looking for. That is our goal, definitely. Our goal is to get you an agent and to make you marketable. Um, so we, we cast or we make demos to make you as marketable as possible. We really try to get to know the people. Um, find out what your strengths are, and to give you a nice showcase. We want to have demos that show a range. It's not just one note Mm -hmm. to make you as marketable as possible. What's the process like there? Um, Well, we meet with you, and we go over what your wish list is, you know, what you feel your strengths are and and what you're good at. And then from there, we ask you questions to get to know you a little better, products that you use, you know, so that's something you've got a connection to. Right. You know, and then we take some time. We pull the copy. Uh, we bring you in for the record. We try and knock it all out in one session, and uh, we make sure that we get a range of reads. You know that nothing sounds exactly the same from one script to the next. We want to make sure we showcase a nice range for you. Um, we always record more than we need, so that way we can narrow it down, have the best of the best on the demo, and then uh, we take some time. We narrow it down to between sixty and ninety seconds. We add music, sound effects, and then send it off to the client. They let us know if they love it or if they want to make any changes, and then we go from there. So we really try to make it a collaborative effort. Yeah. Do you just do commercial demos there? We do commercial animation and narration demos. Wow. <laughs> Important stuff. Yes. If you don't know how to record, have professionals do it. Exactly. You want it to sound like it was done professionally. <laughs> right. Again, if you're just joining us, Catherine Haran is joining us. If you have a question for her... It's really, really easy to ask it to her right now if you're watching this live because Jack Daniel, 
who's over there in the uh, the guest booth. <laughs> our our social media czar is taking care of uh, all the questions in the chat room, and we will get those to her in our next segment. So start asking, because I got some questions, and it's going to raise more questions for you. <laughs> uh, anyway, you also do personalized coaching there, not just classes. Yes. So you work with people one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, um, I do private lessons in my spare time after work. Um, where I'm happy to meet with people, you know, really, if they've got something specific they want to work on, we can definitely do that. Or if you're just kind of looking for, you know, a little more broad, you know, want to see what you're good at, what your strengths might be, just want me to throw you around, beat you up, we can do that too. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so let's get through it really to the meat of what goes on over at Boys Caster. Like I said, the guys outside going, uh, yeah. reading their copy yeah. stuff. How does the casting process work? Who contacts you? What do you do? Who do you call in? And right. that sort of thing. How does that work? So it all starts when a client emails us or calls us and says, hey, we need casting for, let's say, Target, for example. And we're looking for females 25 to 35. And, you know, they're friendly and, war you know, whatever. They give us the specs. They give us what they're looking for. Um, the next big thing to find out is if it's union or non-union. Um, if it's union, then we know, you know, it's the standard rates. You know, if it's TV, it pays this much. If it's radio, it pays this much. If it's non-union, we'll negotiate the rates, make sure it's something that's reasonable, because we really do try to get, you know, the best talent for the best price. You know, we try not to send people stuff that pays crap. Um, we want to make sure it's, you know, worth the actor's time. And uh, then from there, we start putting together... Oh, we also find out how many people they want. Right. Do they want a full day of casting, a half day of casting, you know, yeah, how many they, options I'm, they're looking for. Right. And they're looking and they give you a set of specs of exactly. somebody like, you know, someone in their in their early sixties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that you sort know? of thing. Uh, exactly. So they send us what they're looking for. And then if it's union, we send it off to the agents that we work with. We work with most of the agencies here in town. Um, and they give us their top three or their top five or however many we ask for, their top talent that they feel fit the spec. And then we take the time, we listen through to everybody because, you know, agents aren't always the best judge of who's appropriate for a We project. won't say who particularly um, is that. But, you know, yeah. they're, they're doing what they can to right. get their, their people a job. Um, but then, yeah, we take them some time, we listen through to everybody, and then we bring in who we feel is the best of the best that represent the spec of what the client is looking for. Um, if it's non-union, we have actually a list of people that are interested in doing non-union projects gathered from people that took classes with us or that you know emailed us, maybe they sent us their demo, that kind of a thing, or that have come in, maybe we've known them for a while and they're like, hey, I wanna get on your list. So we've got our own in-house list of people that we bring in for those. And it's kind of a similar process. Um, we make a list of who in that book we feel fits the spec the best and then we go through and we narrow it down to who we really think is the best of the best. We think these are definitely the prime candidates for this job. Um, and then we call people up. We bring them in. Um, we have a booth director that will direct you to get the best read out of you we can. And then we send the link of all the auditions off to the client. Hopefully the client loves it. And they say, hey, we want to hire so-and-so. And then, you know, we call them. We check their avail. Right. And get them the job. Yeah. It, but it really comes down to, I mean, you guys are doing the sifting process mm -hmm. and getting people, you know, to the right people, right. you know, to the client. But ultimately, it's the client that makes that decision, it is. isn't it? We have no say in who gets hired. Um, it's always kind of fun when we're directing in the, you know, out front. The booth director will sometimes go, this person's perfect for it. You know, or, you know, they'll have a list of their top favorites who they think would be really great for this job. And it's kind of interesting to see who the client comes back with, because sometimes it will be who the booth director thought was best. Right. You know, but it's definitely a crapshoot. There's no rhyme or reason to who gets picked, per se. Right. Um, someone who may have had what we think would be the best performance won't get the job. They'll go with somebody else because they like the sound of their voice better. Yeah. Or that person sounded like their ex-wife. Exactly. Or something along those or lines. Or then they'll just scrap the project altogether and go with their cousin. You know, there's... Really, no. <laughs> but at least there's a process in place. There is a process. Um, 
But uh, yeah, ultimately it's the client that gets the final say and they book who they want to book. Okay. And you do, and you're the one, are you in charge of the casting there or you, you're one of the people that is working on different projects at each different time? Or? Exactly. I mean, Kelly, because she's the head of casting, she is the ultimate and last say. But we definitely pitch ideas, you know, if, especially when it's the non-union side. You know, will people that have taken classes or have done privates with me or, you know, we have a workout group. Uh, that voice caster does every Wednesday night. A lot of those people, I'll think of those, you know, or, you know, just people I'll go through the book too with Kelly and I'll go, ooh, ooh this person would be really good. So, you know, it's very much a collaborative effort there as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so when people are coming to you, you know, for classes or wanting to be, you know, get the opportunity to be cast in something, what are you looking for? We definitely like to have a range of options. Um, I mean, you, the client will come to you and they could want anything, anything from little kids to, like you said, 60 year olds, you know, there's a whole or gamut older. or older <laughs> men and women, <laughs> um, different languages. So as long as I always tell people if voiceover is something you love to do, it's worth pursuing because there really is something out there for everybody because um, mm -hmm. every client has something different they're looking for, you know, and they're you Union, non-union, it doesn't matter. There's there's plenty of opportunities for every range and race and age and everything. Yeah, just look yeah. at Gilbert Godfrey. It doesn't really <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter what you sound like, <laughs> right? as long as you can tell the story right. Exactly. Acting is the most important thing. You know, we get calls all the time. Oh, so-and-so says I have a great voice. I want to do voiceover. Oh, how many times do we hear that? It's like, well, that's so, great, but yeah. if you don't know how to use it, it doesn't matter. Right. It's voice acting. Acting is the uh, most important part. Right. Uh, once again, we're talking with Catherine Horan from The Voice Caster. And once again, you got a question for her? I got lots of questions <laughs> for her. But if you have a question, throw it in the chat room right now. Uh, we were talking about demos. When you listen to a demo, mm -hmm. and I've listened to a lot of demos. <laughs> you know, people send me stuff. You must get probably three or four a day. Oh, probably. And what are you looking for? And what usually is the first thing that gets a demo round filed, like at the slate? <laughs> mm. um, don't do anything weird. Like sometimes people do something because they think it's going to be memorable. Like we've got one demo we always laugh at because it starts with like a, you know, the person singing their name. Right. And it's like, oh, oh that's a little nice. weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's different. It's different. Caught your attention. It did, but yeah, maybe not in the best way. Um, I would say, you know, when we get demos in, we want to make sure they sound professional. You can definitely tell when somebody just made it at home themselves. And it's kind of like, eh, maybe not so much. So definitely make it sound good. This is your calling card. This is what people are going to listen to and remember you for. So you want to make a good first impression, you know, so make sure it sounds high quality, make it sound professional. I, I know how to help them with that. <laughs> it's one of my jobs. All right. Number two, what else? Also make sure you show a range. Um, Cause we don't want everything to sound exactly the same. We want to see what you can do. You know, we want to see, Oh, they can be, you know, conversational and friendly, but they can also be maybe a little quirky or they can do a retail spot. You know, and, you know, if you can do something like legal or if you can sing, definitely that's something to include, but maybe put that more towards the end. Because um, sometimes these things will come up, we'll, we'll need people that can sing. Um, and it's, you know, you, you just have to take the agent's word for it that they can sing because there's no sample. Um, so things like that are always good to have, but maybe don't lead with those. Yeah. Okay. Something that's going to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, and make right sure your first spot really is a good representation of you. That your first spot, this is naturally what you do, what you sound like, what you're best at. Yeah, I, I think that's a mistake a lot of people make, even with a lot of other demo producers. It's like, okay, we'll do a bunch of different spots for you. And then they just put them in mm -hmm. some sort of random order without really taking the, uh, the time to go, this is your signature sound, yes. and putting it up front. Yes, so, highly recommend that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, but who's to determine that, you know, sometimes, sometimes people aren't the best judge of their own stuff. Fair enough. So, you know, um, but hopefully that's what we get from a lot of people that do demos with us have taken classes with us and they're people that we know. So we get a good feeling for them 
Uh, but when we do get people that we don't know, that's why we like to meet with you. We, we usually do a demo meeting to start, and we really get to know you, ask questions, and that kind of a thing. And that helps us to kind of get a better feel for what you naturally do. Same thing with when we're in the session. Um, we'll beat you up, we'll throw you around, try different options for different spots. Which is why the walls are padded there, by the way. <laughs> You were wondering. Right. Uh, but that also helps us get a better feel for who this person is and what do they just naturally, what naturally just kind of clicks with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all right. So we talked about what you don't want to hear. What do you want to hear? What is it that when you hit play on somebody's demo that you go, well, <laughs> what is it that this person has? You know, what makes Jack better than me? You know, I, it's... <laughs> Well, it all depends on what we're looking for at well, the time. Okay, uh, that's a big part of it because we get lots of demos and a lot of them are pretty good. Um, and then we'll say we save everything that we get in. Right. Um, so it's rare that we delete anybody's demo. Um, so yeah, feel free to send them in. We'll listen to them. We'll keep them on file. Um, like I said, just the things that stick out the most are just having it sound professional, making sure it's got good quality. It doesn't sound like you recorded it. You know in the basement or, you know, in the bathroom or, you know, something like that. You right. know, just want to have a good quality. Um, but then, you know, like I said, also that range, making sure you know what you're doing and you know what represents you well. Don't try to do things that aren't you. Right. Uh, make sure, you know, you've got a good representation of yourself and uh, that you can show that you've got some range. Right. All right. So the voice caster is out in Burbank. Yes. Driving towards the mountains and you, there it is. <laughs> There's a lot of people who watch this show all over the globe. They're not here in L.A. Right. How can voice casters help them? Well, we do, from time to time, do casting that's not here in L.A. We do have some agents in New York that we work with. You know, sometimes we'll get, we just had this happen a week or two ago, where they wanted to cast out of New York. So that, you know, just because you're not here in Los Angeles doesn't mean you're, you know, it's a total loss. Um, if people aren't here in town, though, it is a little bit limiting because a lot of our clients want to record here in L.A. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth trying to do. Um, with things like Voices.com and Voices123, there's a lot of opportunity out there for people that are in, you know, other states or aren't in a major metropolitan city. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever do remote sessions from people from their studios? We do not. Okay. Uh, the client might. Right. Um, but we just record here in Los Angeles. Like, the, the talent is always in our studio. Mm -hmm. And then they might be connecting from St. Louis or New York or wherever. Right. Now, you've got a bunch of booths over there. We do. Uh, and you have ISDN. Can people actually go over there? If they need an ISDN line mm -hmm. or something, you can go over there and rent, yes. it, rent the studio. Yes, people can out? rent out our studio for uh, job recordings. Uh, we offer ISDN, uh, Source Connect, you were talking about that, mm -hmm. uh, Phone Patch, and if it's just a straight record. Sometimes nobody needs to dial in and direct or be on the other line to record. It's just the actor coming in and just recording it, and that's that. So those are all options we can do. Uh, we have a standard studio rate of $75 per half hour, and we also have an actor rate because, you know, sometimes clients are cheap and they make the actor pay for it out of pocket and don't reimburse them. Go figure. And that's $25 for every 15 minutes. Hmm. All right. So if someone's interested in, you know, taking advantage of all the services and mm -hmm. classes and things they have with there, how can they get a hold of VoiceCasters? Uh, the easiest way is to go to our website, which is VoiceCaster.com. Uh, most of our information is up there. Um, if you have any specific questions, um, you can always feel free to email us. And my direct email is casting the number 3 at voicecaster.com. So if you have questions about classes or demos or anything we've talked about here, feel free to email me and I'll be able to answer your questions. Right. Do you have like a newsletter or announcements that go out? We do periodically send out uh, e-blasts um, and that's you can sign up for that on the voicecaster.com website. Um, there's, I think if you go to contact that page, it'll drop down and there'll be a little link there for you to sign up for any of our newsletters or announcements. I, it fills up my inbox all the time. <laughs> I think she's going to have a full inbox tomorrow now. Hey, yeah. That's S fine. Speaking of which, do we have a full inbox? We have a full in It's a hotbed of activity. Some all of right. it's even legal. All right. That's good to know. All right. We'll be right back with Catherine Haran talking about the voice caster in Burbank and how to get cast in this nutso business <laughs> right after these important. 
As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, you know, we're talking here with Catherine Haran, but we have to talk about one of the greatest sponsors on the face of the earth, somebody who has trusted us here at VoiceOver Body Shop with his message since the beginning of time. And that's Harlan Hogan over at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Now, Harlan had prepared a video for us tonight, but there was a thunderstorm or something in Illinois. And somehow the signal got all scrambled. So we can't present that video. Maybe we'll show it next week. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. So you have to listen to me talk about voiceoveressentials.com. He was doing a, a, an unboxing of the mixer face, which we were talking about mm. ad infinitum last week. Mm. Uh, popular item. It's a, a self-powered interface. Great for remote. Great for your own interface. And it's really cool. He's got them over there. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Check out the mixer face. He's got them. It took a long time for, for Mike Goodman over at uh, Centrance to build this thing, but now he's making them. Harlan has them. Go over there right now and take a look at that. But while you're there, check out all the other stuff that he has over at voiceoveressentials.com, like the VO1A voice optimized voiceover microphone. It's the only microphone, well, one of the only microphones actually built for doing voiceover, designed, tuned for doing voiceover. Great for men and women. You'll find it over at voiceoveressentials.com. Along with the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones and a pile of other things, along with a lot of books and material on how to do voiceover better. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com the best way to get there is to just scroll to the bottom of the page, click on the icon down there of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro, and it will take you right there, letting him know that Dan and George and today Jack sent you over there. So uh, thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor for the last seven and a half years. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you all watching out there. We'll be right back. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. And we're back with Catherine Haran here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And we have a pile of questions for our guest tonight. And so we'll start off. And I guess we actually have to start off with the mail-in questions that we've got. That's right. So, Jack, take it away. Eric Aragoni, a longtime and consistent sponsor of this show which I have always appreciated as the one-time host. Um, Eric says, what's the biggest pet peeve you have regarding a voice actor, whether it's auditioning in person or via MP3 files sent? That's a good question. I've had mm. <laughs> lots of actor pet peeves. Um, one of them being not being able to follow just basic directions. <laughs> uh, when I send out an email to an actor, um, usually anything they would want to know is in that email. And I can't tell you how many times I'll get a, an email back with some question, and it's like, it's right there. Um, also, not sending things back in an MP3 format. <laughs> um, a lot of people recording on their phones, it'll save it as an MP4. It's not the end of the world, but it's an extra step we have to yeah, take to then convert it to an yeah. MP3. So that's a little annoying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking at the instructions, and we get them all the time, if it says MP3... And here's how you label your file. Yes. Generally copy exactly what they want and Good type your thumb. name in after. We don't want a WAV file. We don't want an MP4. We want an MP3. You want them in mo one track mono, too. Yeah. 
amazing how many people send <laughs> stuff in stereo. Doesn't it sound better in stereo? Mm, the voice is only coming from one direction. Yeah. Well, maybe it shows great confidence, though, Catherine. If somebody sends a WAV file, they just assume they have the job, and they could just go ahead and forward <laughs> it to the client. WAV files are dangerous because uh, if you send it that way, it's you know the best quality. So who knows if they're just going to steal it instead of making you come mm, back and re-record it, and then you know you got the job. Wow. Interesting. All righty. Our good friend Bev Standing. Bev, um, how are you? A Canadian friend. Are most of the commercials you're working on national TV union spots? The reason I ask, and of course I mean Bev, it's not really me, is that I seldom see auditions for spots I see on TV. I have several agents, have been in the business for a number of years, am Canadian and non-union. Well, unfortunately, the uh, business is in a little bit of an upheaval lately. When I first started at VoiceCaster, we did mostly union stuff. And then over the years, it was a little more equally union, non-union. And I would say in the last year or so, we definitely do more non-union than we do union. And it's for a lot of big companies that you wouldn't think would be going non-union, but they are because it's cheaper for them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's now time for a jack attack, 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 attack. attack, attack, attack. Mm. That, that's me, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in case uh, you were this, wondering. This is me, by the way. Yeah. So, um. What happens, Catherine, when you discover a mismatch between how someone auditioned and how they performed, especially if you send them to like a mm. you know a live uh, uh, you know a live recording? And do you have a war story you might be able to share with us? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Luckily, this doesn't happen very often. Good. Um, but there was a time a client just wanted demo submissions. They didn't want to actually have actors come in and audition on their script. They just wanted to listen to actor demos, and so we sent a bunch out. And they picked somebody, and then when that person got to the session, he did not sound the way he did on the demo. Mm. And the client was not happy, I'll and uh, <laughs> it was uh, quite painful to listen to the session, because they were trying to get reads out of him that he naturally couldn't just do. So that you always want it? your demo to sound like you. That's another important thing yeah, when I would doing hope. a demo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that, and that happens a lot where, you know, if someone goes in, gets a real professional mm -hmm. demo done or thought it was a professional demo and the script isn't for them or, you know, and they, the, the director might take them through that. If you do a demo, if you're putting something on your demo, you darn well better be able to reproduce yep. that when you get into somebody else's Definitely. studio. Definitely. All right. And Catherine, regarding that war story, in my defense, I was drinking heavily that day, so <laughs> you know, it wasn't my fault. Well, that usually helps a lot in some cases. <laughs> uh, from Get Fred's Voice, Catherine, do you send demos to you? Uh, or do people send demos to you, or do you get them only through agent auditions? Both. Um, okay. Definitely people can send their demos to us. Like I said, we save just about every demo we receive. We keep it on file and keep you in mind for auditions that we, or for castings that we do get in. Um, so you can send those to me. Uh, the email I said was casting the number three at voicecaster.com. Send those over, we'll take a listen, and and uh, we'll keep them on file for things that we get. And then yes, also, especially when we're doing union, uh, using union casting, we'll listen to the demos that the agents send to us. All right. One from J.V. Martin. Wow, ah. Mr. Yeah. Shark himself. Yeah. Um, he's been a guest on the show at least once, right? Once or at twice? At least once. He says or asks, occasionally, if scheduled conflict, the voice caster has let me send in a self-directed audition from my home studio. Does the voice caster ever let somebody submit from home but direct the actor via phone patch or other ways? We don't do that. Okay. Um, just because we don't have the time. Um, but I will say JV is great. He always does great <laughs> stuff. So he, he can get he away with he that. He doesn't need to worry about that. But yeah, yeah I mean, we, we will on occasion, depending on circumstances and confidentiality, um, if people can't make it in for the actual audition, we can send it to them. They can record it from home and then get it back to us. Uh, but yeah, we don't direct them. Just we don't have the time or the manpower for... If we had to do that for everybody, that could be mm. a little intensive. Right. All right. Tom Machen's question. Oh, you love to pronounce that name. I probably got it wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. He, he likes to ask questions, and they're good ones. Um, how does, well, meaning you, how do you figure out their experience level with something when somebody does submit or is interested in learning with you? In, in other words, intermediate versus advanced or pro, are there hard cutoffs? Is it just sort of something you come up with on your own by listening? I mean, how does that work? That's a good question. Um, usually, because... For, for our more advanced classes, the Advanced and the Audition Pro, we do ask for either a demo or some kind of voice sample. Um, the demo's nice because it does show us that you've 
gone through the step of having a demo made, which means you're probably at a certain level above people that are just starting out. Mm. Um, and then we can also kind of hear what you do, hear the range, you know, get a feel for what you sound like. And you sometimes will also ask people to give us some of their experience. If they've got an agent, that's another good plus. That means you're probably out there working regularly. Um, or we'll ask them for some of their acting background. What classes have you taken? Where else have you studied? How, you know, what other voiceover classes have you had? Mm. And that'll kind of give us a gauge for where you're probably going to land for our classes or for auditions that we're holding. Mm -hmm. He has a second part to the question, and this is actually an interesting question. How much time is spent looking for new talent as opposed to reusing the talent you already have? <laughs> I mean, are you always looking for new talent? Always uh, you, looking for new talent. Do you have talent. a roster of people that you usually go to? Or? We're always adding people to our, our non-union list, for sure. Um, and like I said, that's where a lot of the classes come in handy, because it really gets the chance for us to know you and know what you do. And so then when casting comes through, you know, every time we've got new classes, we're always getting new people, and we can always submit new people to the clients. Um, so we, we do try to keep it fresh, we, especially if the client has cast with us before, or maybe they're casting for the same product again, you know, even if it's a couple years apart. We try to make sure we're not sending them the same people every time. Uh, we used to actually work with a client, um, and they said we couldn't submit the same people for, I think it was like three years. So if they read on it once, they had to wait three years before we could bring them in again. So even clients don't want to hear the same people over and over again. It's always nice to hear new, fresh voices. Right. And it seems to be a caravan of fresh voices constantly <laughs> pouring That's into true. this city. It's true. Day after day. Question from Jenna. Jenna, um, this, is a, this is all about you, Catherine. Oh. She wants to know how difficult is it to be a casting director? Do you have to sit there for hours and sift, or do you already kind of have someone in mind when you hear this spec? A little of both. Um, it, it just depends on the project. Uh, sometimes we'll get something, and it's like, ooh, you know, right away you'll just think of all the people that you want to bring in for it. Sometimes it's a little tougher, especially if it's something you don't see very often, or if it's you know foreign languages or things like that, that takes a little more sifting. Mm. So. Um, also, uh, she asks, this is Jenna's second part, how big is that list that you keep of non-union talent? Is it tens, is it hundreds, is it thousands? Definitely not thousands, probably hundreds. Okay. All right, so it's important to keep a big list Come on in. Come on in. Don't worry about it. No, you can come in here. It's fine. Yeah, you want to have a list that's big enough that you can get the client what they need. Uh, but you don't want it to be so large that it's just overwhelming. All right. But it's a con it's like the you shifting want to know sands of Texas. You've got, exactly. You want we always to have new people coming in. And, and then you do, unfortunately, have people going out for various reasons. You know, sometimes they move away. Unfortunately, sometimes they pass away. You know, things like that that will cause them to... And there's, and there's lots of those pictures of those people who have passed oh, away I know, on, on the, the walls, walls there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, some, you know, but I remember Patty Duke's father from the Patty Duke show. What was his name? He was, he was on Mr. There. Duke. Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Duke. Yeah. No, well, John Aston's on there too. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's great going in there because it's sort of like this, you know, you're going into this nostalgic place. Yeah, it's and a time see, capsule. <laughs> you're seeing all these great voices there. Well, Catherine, thank you so much yes, for being with for us, me. for being here and telling us a little bit more about the VoiceCaster. Yeah. Once again, how can they get a hold of you? Go to VoiceCaster.com, or you can feel free to email me at casting, the number three, at VoiceCaster.com. All right. All right. Well, we got to wrap things up here in just a little bit, but we still got a tech question. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics. And now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. 
This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right, we're back. Fascinating talking to the industry people here who are the, you know, they're not the voice talents. They're the people that make it all happen. You know, I mean, we yeah. make it happen in our studios, though. Yeah. Without them, though, you know, we can't connect to the work. And, you know, the, the, the service they do is invaluable. And hearing it right from the horse's mouth is just a terrific thing. Yeah, that's, and that's why we're here for our voiceover body shop. Uh, we did get a tech question. We did. Yeah. From JDK. JDK, man of hey, many, JD. many children. Uh, yes. <laughs> as, as we like to describe him out there in the desert. And, He's I, other things too. But yeah. not, oh, great yeah. guy. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. But he has a question. He says, when I'm in a Zoom session, and those of you, Zoom is a, it's like Skype, only a lot better. Hmm. Um, I'm always told my volume is overpowering. Mm. Uh, none of the adjustments I make seem to work. I'm running my Yamaha AGO3 into a MacBook Pro. Thanks. You need to understand input levels. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of things that can go on in Zoom. One is you might have the automatic level control on. Probably. And if that's on, it may keep your volume too low. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if it's overpowering at the other end, it may be a matter of not looking at your input volume beforehand. Sometimes it can be a little different mm. in Zoom than it is for what you're seeing on your on your recording software. I wouldn't necessarily use Zoom for actually recording remotely. Mm -hmm. Source Connect is much better for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Zoom is great for conferencing and all those other things. Um, and if you're overpowering just talking to the other people, you know, you can usually change that within the the uh, the parameters, and maybe actually activate the uh, the automatic gain control in there. So that might that might help out a lot because I think there's a built-in no. limiter there. Yeah. Do you think this could be a gain staging problem as well, or do you think it's it might be? Zoom? Well, with with an AGO3, which is a pretty simple interface, yeah. which I happen to use here in this very studio to feed that microphone way over there, all the way across the studio, over to my. You know, over to my computer, there. all the way over there. Good Lord. Man. It's a hike every day. I, I get about an extra 500 <laughs> steps going between here and my booth. Um, you should be able to see if you're overmodulating from there. True. And it may be that he's not, he, he, his booth may not be right where the interface is. True. And he's not seeing the red light flashing or whatever. Or JD, you just have too powerful of a voice. Well, and that's he does. Really what's going to do. He, yeah, does. he does. He has to overpower all those kids. <laughs> anyway, uh, but if you're continuing to have a problem with that, you know where to find me. Um, Pretty sure you had a couple more just while we were talking. Yeah, I don't see where they are, though. Anyway, uh, it's been great to have you here. It's tonight. been so much fun. I mean, fun. you're here every week anyway, right, but right, you know, right. it's great having you on. George will be back in two weeks. My agent led me to believe this was a permanent job. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I, whatever. Yeah, I, you know, you, I, knowing your agent, you know, he's like, yeah, sure, just promote yourself, just show up, <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, All righty. Well, next week we won't be here, and that's because it's Labor Day. It's Labor Day. Yeah. Now we've had the show on Labor Day before, but we decided this year, let's let's have like a Labor Day brunch or something, and let's mm. just have a party and not have to worry about doing the show. It's a lot of work. Wow. So we're not doing that. Am I invited? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> that Maybe. sounds like a soft no if I've ever heard one. No, you're always welcome because you can walk over here. That's right. Or ride your bike. Uh, and uh, and then uh, the following week, it is Jewish New Year's. It's Rosh Hashanah. We can't do the show here that night. I won't let it. Marcy certainly won't allow it happening. Uh, so we're not going to do the show for like two weeks. But when you figure... That we've gone like 10 weeks in a row That's here. A lot. Uh, we're tired. We need some time off. We want to retool, get the show going the way we want. If there's something you want to see on the show, mm -hmm. write to us. Also, take our survey right on our, our, uh, our website. Just click on survey and tell us what you want to see on the show, the types of guests you'd like to hear from, questions you have. And again, if you have a question, you can write to us here at theguys at vobs.com. TV. 
makes it easy. You know, tech question, the people you want to see on here, you know, if you're JDK, why are you overmodulating? You know, stuff like that. And lay off the kids. It's, it's too much. It, it is. It's it way really too is. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me, you can't because I don't have a VOBS thing. It's just a one-time deal. If you Marissa. like attention, Jack, I might forward it to oh, you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. I feel better. All right. Uh, and then on September 17th, when we return to this amazing studio here, Kat Cressida will be with us. She's a great audiobook narrator and uh, voice actor, and we'll have a great time talking with her. Our donors of the week, since George isn't here, I have compiled this week's list of donors. Stephanie Sutherland, mm. Diana Birdsall, thanks, Diana. Diana. Andrew Kaufman, uh, Eric Aragoni, who's here every week, uh, Patty Gibbons, Brian Page, great actor, Amanda Fellows, George Whittam Sr., and <laughs> Tracy H. Reynolds. Nice. Thank you for your uh, your support. You know, your donations allow us to keep this show, we like to say, on the air, but in really, it's down the optical cable, you know, and coming into your home or wherever it is you're watching this show or on your iPhone or Android uh, thing, it helps. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to don't make a donation, you can make it automatic, you know, a buck a month, a buck a week. We don't care. It's just great that you support our show. There is a button, I think it's above me, that says donate. Try that. Yeah. It looks backwards. Oh, because I'm behind the camera. Oh, that's what, it that's is. what it is. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. cool. All right. Um, also, if you have to have help with your home studio, you could talk to Jack. It but probably won't do you any good. He's not going to help you at all. Although he has a great studio and a, and a, and a beautiful one at that. Because he asks for help from the right people. Uh, usually George is sitting here, but he's not here. You can call him uh, or contact him at georgethetech.com. I think that's right. It is. Oh, good. Or I... georgethetech. For you geeky guys. For geeky guys. Right. Uh, and you can reach me easily uh, most of the time uh, at homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you want to learn more about how to set up your home studio, how to get it right, how to make sure it's sounding the way it's supposed to sound. Because I know these things. I've been doing this since the Ford administration. So you just did uh, Debbie Derryberries pretty recently too. I didn't you? did. Yeah. We built a I mean, beautiful studio yeah. over over at her place. Took a closet, turned it into a beautiful booth, and yeah. she's now producing stuff over there. Bravo! And that's, uh, that's that's really that was really a cool job to do. Mm -hmm. So we can help you do all those sorts of things. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the show logs. Jack DeGolia and Dan Sutton are sitting out there somewhere, writing every word that was said in this show, putting it in the show notes. Saints. They are. We really appreciate your, your time with that, guys. When the YouTube video comes on and you want to watch the show again, which you will. Uh, <laughs> I will, certainly. Well, yeah, because we didn't see it. We're actually on it. But we'll be able to see the, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see the time code of when a question was asked and what the answer was, or at least where it is, so you can go back in the, the actual YouTube uh, video. Or you can see it. the places where Jack Daniel talks and just speed past those. You don't have yeah. to bother, you know, or slogging through yeah. it. Or slowing down. Even <laughs> more interesting. Uh, let's see here. We're here live almost every Monday, except the following two Mondays. Uh, and if you'd like to be in our audience, you can write to us at the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV and say audience in the the uh, the line there or just show up, and, you know, which some people tend to do, which is actually kind of fun. Show up for brunch. Dan's having one apparently next week. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else we got? Uh, show us your booths. Oh, booths. Booths. Oh, right. Show us your okay. booths. Who's right. who's booth with this this week? This was um, Susan. I forgot who that was. Julie Marcus. Julie Marcus. This must be one of George's Fantastic one, voiceover yeah. palace creations. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. The uh, baffling to my whatever this is. And the uh, it looks like a tuned bass panel in the very back. I think that's really cool right. stuff. And this was just a badminton court in somebody's backyard. I mean, look at how what a great wow. job he did there. Really uh, and you believed me, too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and we need to thank our sponsors. You should. Because without them, you know, this would just be nothing. Uh, so we'd like to thank Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO2GoGo. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And our good friend J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, thanks, of course, uh, to the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for Better Webcasting. 
Uh, our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting us great guests. Jack Daniel on chat room Can and we hear YouTube. it for Jack Daniel on chat room and duty? guest host duty. That's like ambidextrous or something. It is. I, I, that's really multitasking. And that's not something I'm very good at, as my girlfriend will tell you. Okay. And, uh, and of course, our amazing multicasting technical director, Sue Merlino, for doing a great job. Excellent tonight. job. Uh, Jack DeGolia, Dan Sutton on the show notes, and Lee Penny simply for being Lee, Lee Penny. Penny. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Jack, thanks so much Thank for you. helping me out here tonight and uh, doing what we do here every week, which is try to help you with your home voiceover studio and your voiceover business. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy business, but we're here to make it sound right. Because if it sounds right, it is right. I did it just like George does it. Except not as cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just not as cool. Close enough. All righty. Well, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm Jack Daniel. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Thanks for coming with us tonight, everybody. We'll see you in three weeks, essentially. So we'll be back the 21st of September. It's a long, long way from May to September. All righty. Have a great week, everybody.